Welcome to Working in Teams, Positioning for High-Performance Teaming, Challenges and Opportunities for Teams in the HIT Environment. The objectives for Positioning for High-Performance Teaming, Challenges and Opportunities for Teams in the HIT Environment are to identify the characteristics of a high-performing team, identify key criteria for high-performance teaming, Propose a team structure that enables high performance. In his book, Well Played Game, Bill Russell describes a moment that he refers to as white heat that happened every so often during his tenure in the NBA. This was a moment when all things seemed to move in slow motion and the teams took on a magical sense of coordination and communication. He describes it in a rather ethereal way, but the takeaway point is that it was during those moments of white heat that both teams were playing at their peak. He describes this as high performing. It rarely happens, but teams can be structured in a way that allows it to happen. The conditions can be made right, the right support is in place, and the right attitudes are present on the team to allow high performance to take place. That is what this unit is about. We need to discuss the importance of establishing the structure, the support, and the interworking as well as the personal motivation across all members so that high performance can actually occur. High performance requires an interweaving of all of these aspects. Like Bill Russell's passage about his white heat experiences with his team, the Boston Celtics in the 1960s, high performance is an experience that few teams are able to achieve. Achieving white heat or reaching the pinnacle of performance is not a final destination that a team reaches and then claims that they have made it. Instead, the goal is to work toward and plan for achievement of the highest level of performance knowing that it may be fleeting. In reality, it is a journey with peaks and valleys along the way. The team may slip in and out of performing status depending on internal and external factors. Your stay can be extended at the top. Bill Russell's experience, however, was that the white heat sequences could last anywhere from 5 to 12 minutes. Let's move on and examine some methods and techniques a team might use to prepare for and extend high performance functioning. Dr. John Halamka, a well-known healthcare chief information officer in his blog, Life as a Healthcare CIO, defines the characteristics of high-performing HIT teams that he has experienced. None of these characteristics should be new to you. They are traits of any good team. Halamka, however, focuses on high-performing health IT teams and adds a bit of detail to the categories you see on the slide. In discussing competence, Halamka asserts, quote, domain expertise and an ability to execute assigned tasks are key to ensuring vision is turned into successful implementation. My experience is that the A players hire A players and B players hire C players. This means that highly competent people surround themselves with skilled people because they do not feel intimidated by having subordinates or colleagues who are smarter, more talented, or more successful." End quote. Halamka continues on to say that in high-performing teams, the domain expertise and ability to execute is cyclic and powerful. He points out the danger that accompanies a less competent person left in charge of hiring other team members. Sometimes, due to issues of low self-confidence and an unwillingness to be shown up by other smarter people, incompetent people hire even less competent team members. Therefore, marginally performing teams require a great deal of supervision and monitoring. Allowing a low-performing team to continue unaddressed can result in a cyclic downward spiral of incompetence. Trust, the second dimension, is also not a new concept. Halamka, as a rock climber, visualizes his teams and asks himself, if I was repelling a cliff face today, would I trust every one of these members to hold my rope? 
If the team is a true, high-performing one, he would answer that question with a yes. According to Dr. Halamka, quote, a high-performing team requires a level of trust and confidence that fosters a joy of collective achievement rather than fear of individual failure, end quote. Dr. Halamka is well known in the HIT domain as being a true workaholic, and as a physician and a CMIO, he is seldom ever turned off in regards to communication. The point that is in regard to HIT high-performing teams is that they have figured out how to balance the need for rapid communication while respecting people's personal time. When the billing system crashes or the clinic EHR stops working or the telemedicine system comes down, there is no such as time off. Health IT fields are an essential part of health and healthcare, so when there is a problem, the team must respond immediately. High-performing teams are responsive and equitable in sharing the load so far as communication goes. High-performing teams are also available for one another within reason and find ways to communicate even in the most difficult of situations. Dr. Halamka points out that high-performing teams are intensely loyal to one another. No one gets thrown under the bus. If one member finds himself ready to be run down, another team member will either bring him to safety or jump under the bus with them. This is often seen in high-performing military teams where no one is left behind. Halamka's final point is, quote, Highly functional teams think about the overall goals of the organization and craft their plans round those activities which will create the greatest good for the greatest number. There is not siloed thinking about resources, budgets, or achieving individual goals at the expense of team goals." End quote. In high-performing health IT teams, there is a focus on what the system is all about and how different aspects of the system are to work together. It is not about trying to gain influence or curry favor. It is about the greater good. You may wonder what makes a high-performing health IT team different than Bill Russell's basketball team in the 1960s. At the core, there is little difference. The major characteristics of trust, collaboration, and so on are still the same. The difference is that the Celtics were playing other basketball teams. In health IT, a team will interact with all sorts of diverse users and stakeholders. The distraction possibility, the politics and inherent hierarchies, and the stress of life and death situations can weigh heavy. The team members may be team members at one minute and providers the next, such as when clinicians are members of the team and get called away. It would be like the Celtics also selling hot dogs while playing the Lakers and having to answer not just to the coach, but to the policeman in the parking lot trying to direct traffic after the game. A well-known management rule, don't send a duck to Eagle School, comes to mind here. It won't work because you can't change people. Let's talk about some of the actions that can help to sustain high-performance teams. The list here is quoted from the work of Lindsay Swinton. Master your own destiny. Put your eggs in one basket. If you don't know it's broken, how can you fix it? Proper practice prevents poor performance. A stitch in time. We'll talk about each one independently. You are the master of your own destiny. High performance teams are not built by the boss. They are developed by each and every member of the team working together and demanding the most of each other. Team management for high performance is like quality. It's everyone's responsibility, both individually and collectively. Your ability to commit to the tasks assigned you and to the processes of the team will enable your team to reach for the stars. You control yourself and in turn have a direct connection to controlling the team. Supporting and sustaining high-performing teams requires that there is a sense of shared responsibility across the team. Therefore, this element of sustaining needs to come from within. Be your own boss. While you may be a member of more than a single team at work,
Swinton believes it is smart to keep your eggs in one basket at a time. In other words, she thinks that it is best to look across your teams and model those team behaviors and features that work well and jettison those that don't. She also asserts that trying to be the master repair person and attempting to fix all of the teams at once is a bad idea. Start small with one team and focus. One of the most revealing books about leadership is Why Great Leaders Don't Take Yes for an Answer by Michael Roberto of the Harvard Business School. One of the basic premises of the book is that most leaders do not gain accurate and genuine perspectives on the workings of their organizations because they are protected from the truth by their handlers or the people who most directly report to them. This is what Swinton refers to as, if you don't know it is broken, how can you possibly fix it? This same danger can exist in teams as well, as teammates attempt to protect each other from bad news. Sustaining high-performing teams really requires that there is honesty both internal to and external from the team. Just like professional athletes, high-performing teams are those that prepare diligently for their job. It takes practice to avoid poor performance. Swinton asks teams to ask themselves, how much time do you and your team invest in practicing basic skills and teamwork? Even if you spend one hour in an effective team meeting, planning who's doing what and when, it's still less than 3% of your working week. Building and maintaining a high-performance team doesn't have to be expensive or time-consuming when you build it into your regular work life. The final step that Laura Swinton offers is to keep going. Address issues early before they morph into something else or end up infecting the team with dissatisfaction. Consistency and regularity are important contributors to keeping the team going and performing well. Sustaining teams that are stellar performers really is a combination of assuring that the external environment is supportive as well as the internal workings of a team. Without both, teams will not be able to reach the white heat stage that we discussed at the beginning of this unit. The final objective from this unit is to propose a team structure that enables high performance. This objective will be met by the activities that are associated with this unit where you will apply the skills and knowledge that you have already gained to create a high performing team. In this exercise, you will call upon the materials that we have covered about team diversity, how to get the right team members on the bus, the characteristics of teams that rise to the top, the positive behaviors that contribute to stellar team performance, and incorporate the five steps of sustaining the high-performing team. This concludes Positioning for High Performance Teaming, Challenges and Opportunities for Teams in the HIT Environment. In this unit, we identified the characteristics of a high-performing team, and we identified key criteria for high-performance teaming. In the activities or exercises that accompany this unit, you will propose a team structure that enables high performance using a variety of knowledge, skills, and tools that we have covered to date in this educational material for working in teams.